Yes, we're here. Do you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me now? Well, I do have here, I do have somebody here who is going to address you, and that is um, Professor Kine Brillenburg Wurt, who is the um, uh, director of the School of Language and Literature and Communication. Here comes Kine. <laughs> <laughs> no. So um, I'm uh, I'm Kine and I'm very uh, pleased. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, I'm very pleased and proud that uh, my department and hence our university is part of this international network of European universities, staff members, and students. And this, at a time when Europe, as we used to know it, is perhaps no longer something to be taken for granted. Uh, the focus of the Erasmus Plus program uh, on the facing the crisis in, uh, in Europe seems very topical to me, even though I'm not part of your, of your network. Uh, perhaps approaching this issue not from an economic perspective, as has been tried so often, but from that of culture, uh, is so the way in which authors from the time of Shakespeare were facing their crisis in the early modern uh, period, they give much needed new insights. So uh, I expect a lot from this network and I wish you lots of inspiration and good luck with the technology. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Okay, so um, let's go back to our usual selves. <laughs> I am Nathalie Vienne Guérin, uh, Professor of Shakespeare Studies at the University Paul Valéry Montpellier III. And I'm here on behalf of a whole team, which is the IRCL, an unutterable acronym referring to our research center based here in Montpellier, uh, which is called so, the Institut de Recherche sur la Renaissance l'âge classique et les lumières. In other words, uh, Institute for Research on the Renaissance, the Neoclassical Age, and the Enlightenment, which is a joint research unit of the French National uh, Centre for Scientific Research, CNRS, and the Université Paul Valéry Montpellier III. It is a research centre that has a European focus, uh, as it leads European, and especially English or British, and French studies. We've had no Brexit at the IRCL. Uh, and we cover the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. Our logo, so perhaps you can see it, our logo <laughs> um, uh, suggests this European Union by overlapping two profiles which you may have recognized, that of Shakespeare and that of Diderot. So through our research centre, at least, Great Britain remains European. The three fields of research at the IRCL are, I quote, first, cultural environments in mutation. Second, traditions, their circulation, transmission, translation in Europe. All this 16th to 18th centuries. And the third um, field is 
entitled Contemporary Approaches to Early Modernity in a Globalized World. And it's on behalf of the whole team and in coherence with this collective European Erasmus Plus project uh, that I am the coordinator of the New Faces program, which gives us a great opportunity to work with wonderful colleagues, what truly wonderful colleagues and students from the nine universities that are part of this venture. In alphabetical order, those universities are Berlin in Germany, Ferrara in Italy, Krakow in Poland, Montpellier, so here in France, Paul Valéry, Murcia in Spain, Porto in Portugal, Prague in Czech Republic, Szeged in Hungary, and Utrecht in the Netherlands. And it is wonderful to work with such a great team of European researchers and students. And I think, I'm not the first one to say that, but I think that at a time when Europe is going through crises of all sorts, such an international program is particularly precious. I wish to take the opportunity of this opening session to warmly, warmly, I mean it, warmly thank all the colleagues and services that are involved in the project here at the Université Paul Valéry Montpellier III and at the CNRS, the two institutions that support our research unit, and without which such a program would not be possible. This program being at the junction of a research project and a training program for students, many services, and in fact the whole university is involved in that project, and I'm really grateful for that. Uh, and I want to warmly thank all those services for their help. The International Re Relations Office, uh, newly renamed Direction des Relations Internationales et de la Francophonie, and here, particular thanks to Marine on this. Uh, the DSEN, sorry for the acronyms, but they are important. They are what constitutes our university. Le service des systèmes d'information et du numérique, that is to say, uh, digital and computer services. Le service des études de la scolarité, that is going to, um, uh, to take care of the students. Uh, the communication services, who has put in place a digi team for this, uh, <laughs> uh, for this event. Um, um, so both here at the university and at the CNRS, the research services, especially the service d'appui à la recherche et aux études doctorales, and the service du partenariat recherche, the direction des affaires juridiques, which is important too, the direction des affaires financières, the UFR2, the Ecole Doctorale 58. Well, all these services are involved in one way or another in such a program, and it is great to be able to rely on them. So I, I, I'm aware of the, the, uh, how lucky we are to be in this university with all those competent and uh, uh, dedicated colleagues. And of course, I wish to thank the members of my research centre, which is a great team, uh, which constitutes a particularly stimulating environment, research environment here at Saint-Charles. I wish also to thank um, the colleagues from the CEPEL, the Centre d'études politiques de l'Europe Latine, uh, some of whom are here today, and from CRISE, so we couldn't do without a research centre <laughs> that is named CRISE. Uh, and, and, uh, which involves many great colleagues. So CRIS means Centre de Recherche Interdisciplinaire en Sciences Humaines et Sociales de Montpellier. So those two Montpellier research centers who are associated partners in this, in this project. Um, I feel privileged to work within this university, which has for a long time put culture at the center of its design and identity especially through the creation of the Centre Culturel Universitaire uh, that is situated in the Théâtre de la Vignette, who are one of the rare universities who have, uh, uh, were lucky enough to have a theatre. Culture is not an empty word to me. The Oxford English Dictionary defines it as, I quote, the cultivation or development of the mind, faculties, manners, improvement by education, and training. So that's meaning number 5A in the OED. To me, 
That's what universities and research in the humanities are for. Culture also means, so still in the Oxford English Dictionary, refinement of mind, taste and manners, artistic and intellectual development. Hence, the arts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievement regarded collectively. And again, to me, that's precisely what universities and research in the humanities are for. At the heart of this project, there's the idea that culture, as defined above, has a part to play in our world, in a world of crisis, and how it can help us, if not solve, at least face understand crises. Hence the title of this program, Facing Europe in Crisis. We've been very uh, careful not to say solving uh, crises, okay? Uh, but facing them and understanding them is a, is a big step. And at the heart of this project, there's also the idea that Shakespeare and his theatrical world is a precious intellectual and artistic object something we can share and that can help us deal with present challenges. Hence the subtitle of the programme, Shakespeare's World and Present Challenges. Working on Shakespeare and his world does not mean that we stand without the current contemporary world. It means, on the contrary, that we work within this world, within our contemporary world, which is still a stage in which all the men and women are merely players and have their exits and their entrances. What can Shakespeare do within or for our contemporary world in Europe and beyond? What does Shakespeare's world teach us about the current crises in Europe? Those are the questions that this programme intends to raise and explore. Shakespeare never used the word crisis in his works, but he used the word critic and he used critical. And his theatre stages a world of crises in which one can, we think, find ways of approaching our current crises. This project is in coherence with the mottos of both our university and of the CNRS. The motto of our university is Semper Dissimilis, which means always different. A quite oxymoronic motto uh, of, 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 for, for our university, which means that we cherish difference, which means that we cultivate otherness, that we want to preserve diversity and openness. The motto of the CNRS is Dépasser les frontières, which has been translated as Advancing the Frontiers. It seems that these two mottos are pre perfectly relevant to our current society, in Europe and beyond, and that this program is in coherence with these words and the political commitment that they express. As a matter of fact, this program, and I'm, I'm going to finish on this, this program aims at coordinating the, word, the work sorry, of 60 students for three years, that is all in all 180 European students, and 20 colleagues coming from nine European countries. These students and colleagues will be given the opportunity to meet for three intensive programs, each lasting two weeks, the first in Szeged next June, the second in Montpellier in 2018, and the last one in Porto in 2019. We owe the original idea of focusing on crisis to Ton Hanselaars, our colleague from Utrecht and who, uh, who was the former president of the European Shakespeare Research Association and was part of a previous European program coordinated by Martin Prochaska in Prague. I take the opportunity of this little speech to warmly thank Ton for this idea. It is quite an attractive idea to think that crisis, instead of meaning division and conflict, will mean for us collaborative work and friendly scientific exchange. But this program aims at initiating a dialogue between nine universities and countries, but also it also has a multidisciplinary um, aim, and we, we, we mean to initiate a multidisciplinary dialogue, dialogue with various fields of research who are represented here today. 
in a context that breeds tensions, fears, rejection, division, it seems to us that culture, and especially Shakespeare, theatre and art, are essential elements to promote dialogue, sharing, creation and reflection. It seems to us that Shakespeare's work is a great catalyst that can allow us to approach the human in all its complexities. And such words as innovation, technology, development, I'm very grateful, um, uh, because we've got here today uh, Jean Saxuc with, with us, uh, who is the president of the Comité Consultatif Régional pour la Recherche et le Développement Technologique. Well, thank you, Jean, for being here. Uh, such words as innovation, technology, development are nothing or don't mean much if they are not irrigated and fed, nourished by the humanities. Thank you very much. And now with Martin. I think this works quite well. Thank you. So Thank you. Can you hear me? All right. Uh, my uh, speech won't be a formal speech as Natalie's. Uh, it will be just a few introductory remarks. Uh, I'm Martin Prohaska. I'm professor of English and American Studies at Charles University, Prague, and head of the Department of Anglophone Literatures and Cultures. What we do in Prague is quite a broad range. Our focus is uh, first theory. We uh, actually uh, draw from the tradition or draw on the tradition of Prague Linguistic Circle, which was founded there in the time between the wars. So we were nourished by structuralism, but are developing our own versions of post-structuralism using, of course, quite a lot of uh, French and English and American scholarship. Uh, we are both, I would say, in literature, in new media, and uh, in cultural studies. Uh, Shakespeare studies have quite notable tradition in Prague. Uh, Zdenek Stribony was one of the, uh, uh, I would say, trustees of the International Shakespeare Association. Thanks to him, there was a Congress, Shakespeare, World Shakespeare Congress in Prague in 2011. Martin Hilsky, his pupil, translated all Shakespeare into Czech, which is quite an extraordinary feat in global, uh, global scope. I don't think that there are many translators of the whole oeuvre of Shakespeare. Uh, our contribution to uh, New Faces was, I would say, um, preparing the whole thing uh, in terms of the previous program, which was called Staging European Identities, which took place in Prague and where we were very happy and honored to invite Natalie to become a member of the team and Jean Christophe and Florence Marc. So this was the way Montpellier got on board, right? And now we are witnesses of something much more, I would say, gigantic, large scale, and I would say very, very interesting and up to date. Concerning the academic standard of this program, I am very much impressed with the high profile of especially people in Shakespeare studies. We have a chair of uh, European uh, European Society for the Research of Shakespeare, and we have several notable Shakespeareans, including Natalie on board, right? Then we have people in Utopian Studies, Fatima is probably still watching us, right? And then we have people even, I would say, in much more modern and contemporary literatures. There are several people in Romantic Studies, in the program, several 19th century scholars. And finally, there are scholars in contemporary poetry, such as Rui, 
right? So I think that we are an interdisciplinary team, apart from, of course, doing film studies and other related disciplines. So we are an interdisciplinary team which can really face the problems of both contemporary culture and the early modern culture. So I am glad and honored to work in the new faces. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. It's my turn. Uh, my name is Rui Carvalho Arme. I represent on this occasion the University of Porto and within it the School of Arts and Humanities. And within it uh, also a, uh, the Department of Anglo-American Studies and a research unit called uh, the uh, uh, Center for English Translation and Anglo-Portuguese Studies. Can you hear me? We need the mic. Not Sorry. that well. Sorry to interrupt. All right. I, I don't want to miss this. Well, thank you. <laughs> Were you able to hear me at all uh, before? All right, okay, I'm not sure whether the, the, the colleagues who are virtually present could hear me beforehand, but I was basically, you know, well, stating my identity, where I come from, acknowledging my own school, the School of Arts and Humanities at the University of Porto, my research unit, uh, and I'd like to uh, uh, say hello again to my colleagues, both, uh, uh, well, Fatima Vieira and uh, Miguel Ramalhete de Gomes, my two colleagues who are members of the teaching staff and the students, and of course, our Dean and also the head of the international office were present there before we had that little technological mishap. But well, uh, I, I'm very much grateful uh, for their ability to be there earlier, in fact, because it's one hour earlier in Portugal uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to witness this inaugural event. Uh, uh, now, I'm, I'm very much, uh, well, grateful to the local Montpellier team, uh, to the whole consortium for making this possible. I, I'm also, I suppose, uh, particularly proud for being a member of the original consortium. Martin was already acquainting us with some of the earlier stages in a trajectory that, in fact, found its starting point uh, back in 2004 in Ferrara, uh, where, led by Paola Spinozzi here present, uh, and uh, by Mariangela Tempera, who very sadly left us little more than a year ago, and whose memory I would also like to pay tribute to on this occasion, uh, we launched a project that eventuated in a series of consortia and a series of projects, of which this not, is not only the latest, but certainly the most ambitious, and I'm very glad to be here and to, to be part of it. Now, uh, uh, Natalie suggested that I could address one particular strand within our concerns, uh, uh, as far as the whole design for new faces is, is, is concerned. And, uh, and that's our close relation to social practices. I mean, the extent to which new faces includes cooperation with governmental and non-governmental organizations that specialize in dealing with local crises and conflicts. Uh, because besides extending the student's academic competence in a series of ambitious ways, new faces also aims to boost their civic awareness and responsibility through an engagement facilitated by the program uh, with a set of non-academic bodies that will allow them to carry out a better informed and more productive inquiry, we hope, into past circumstances in order to develop a more solid understanding of current crises. Uh, now, this has been made possible through a series of protocols, both with first sector and third sector organizations, that is, both state bodies and civil society agencies, in particular NGOs, that will allow students to get acquainted with specific ongoing efforts to tackle recent crises, especially in the field of human mobility. Uh, of course, the particular ways in which this will take place may vary along our route from the uh, first IP to take place this year in Saget, through the second here in Montpellier, to the third on my own turf in Porto in 2019. Uh, as regards us specifically in Porto, we'll be interested on this particular front in exploring the interface between the program's intellectual content, to which uh, we are all, of course, very much committed, and insights from agents as diverse as the Portuguese Border Authority, the Portuguese Council for Refugees, and the Observatory of the Roma Community. Students 
will have the opportunity to meet officials from such bodies and hopefully also people covered by their action either on their own premises or at the university and we believe this will carry particular importance for their ability the students ability to project onto current circumstances a historicized awareness of conflict and crisis that through its academic component uh, the program encourages them to develop we are very much looking forward to it again thank you uh, Nathalie and Florence and Marine and the whole Montpellier team. Uh, thank you to the whole consortium for making this possible. It's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you. Bye. Everybody. And it's been quite interesting to follow these speeches because we've gone backwards. So we have started from where we are now and we have gone backwards in time. So I will continue to do so because I will start by saying, picking up on what Rui just said, that we started in Ferrara in 2004. This is very true. And this allows me, of course, to remember Mariangela Tempera, who was, I would say, the one who brought up this idea in, in the first place in 2004. And I will also remember, allow me to go autobiographical for a few seconds, I remember that I had just arrived in Ferrara, was very young at the time, and she welcomed me with this idea. And Mariangela has always been famous for being very enthusiastic, very straightforward, so I had just arrived and she said, we'll do this, we'll do this, this is the first thing we'll do together, we'll go with, for this um, intensive program, this is how it was called at the time. So at the beginning it was four universities involved. Uh, it was Utrecht, it was pra uh, sorry, it was Porto and uh, what else? Sorry? Berlin. Berlin, exactly, Berlin, Berlin, Berlin. And then we went on for three years in Ferrara. And then we went to Porto for another three years, and then it was Prague. So you see, really we can talk about the diachronic development of this project. And I would also like to say that what we are doing now is quite different from what we were doing years ago. So I also I want to point out the continuity, which is very important, but I also want to stress the difference, how it has evolved, how this project has evolved through the years. It has evolved radically, significantly. Also, I would like to say that in my university, in my department, uh, we have got various various identities, it's called the Department of Humanistic Studies, so it's less specific than the departments we have described so far. And in my department we bring together uh, various sectors, starting from the social sciences, so pedagogy, um, psychology, sociology, anthropology, history, uh, history, medieval, modern, history of science, history of philosophy, and of course literature and language. Literatures foreign literatures, Italian literature, classical literature, and the languages and linguistics. And language is where I met my colleague, Richard Chapman, who I hope is following, uh, following us from Ferrara. So uh, um, Richard Chapman and I are now continuing this project with, uh, that was started uh, years ago. Also, I would like to say something about the specificity of this project with regards to teaching skills, which is what um, Natalie suggested I should talk about, and I believe it's a, a really in innovative and really inspiring model. I would like to talk about model because we can talk about models every now and then. This is, I would say, a good model and a good practice, and it's a model whereby these students, the students that come from various universities and that have gone on increasing throughout the years, because at the beginning it was four, and then six, and then eight, and now nine. So you can imagine how it has widened and broadened its scope and its depth. So the students that have been selected will have the opportunity to choose two seminars, one the first week and the other the second week, and they will be able to choose seminars that will be held by professors other than theirs. So this is the core, and this is, I would say, the originality of this project. Because we come, each of us, we come as a team, 
professors and students, but the students will have the opportunity to dialogue and to be together with other professors and other students. And also, of course, there will be collective moments, so there will be plenary lectures in which we are brought together. But the, the idea of the seminar is a very important one because it allows for a, I would say, a, a more, a, a closer focus. And it allows also us to talk together, to come to know each other for a few days. So it will be seminars in the morning and lectures in the afternoon which means that we will get to know each other and we will get to know each other as a group. So as a smaller group and as a bigger group. And I think this is really something that should become, uh, for the European Union, a good, a good model. Because as far as I can say from my experience throughout the years, there's nothing more inspiring than to see students coming from different cultures and getting to talk about their own cultures and the differences and the similarities also, of course, in terms of socialization, because it's not only about teaching, it's not only about Shakespeare and Shakespeare's world, but it's also about socializing and putting different cultures together. One last thing is about me as a scholar. Well, I'm not a Shakespearean scholar, scholar you see. <laughs> and it's, uh, I mean, that's, I think, is something that is also an added value. I'm not saying I'm not because one has to be, but I'm saying that I'm not a Shakespearean scholar because uh, when I met Mariangela in Ferrara, she has always been a Shakespearean scholar. And in fact, she founded a centre back in 1991. So you can imagine, it's been decades. And I went there as a utopian scholar. I still am a utopian scholar. So when we talk about the early modern age, for me, it's mainly, of course, not only, but it's mainly, it's mainly about Thomas More. And last year, 2016, was we commemorated 16. Uh, sorry, when he was uh, sorry when he was when he died in 1516. So it was 500 years from his death. So for me, it's Thomas More, and it's uh, of course Francis Bacon, and it's of course Tommaso Campanella. So we are talking about different intellectuals here. And we're talking about utopia, and I would like to say hello to my friend Fatima in Oporto. So the two of us would say represent utopia, um, utopia and utopian studies. So utopia, one last thing, utopia deals with crisis intrinsically, because utopia as a literary genre is precisely a genre that is born out of the author's deep and acute awareness of crisis around him or her. You see, so this is the very, I would say, the very stimulus, it's, it's the very origin of this genre. When authors realize that crisis is all over, so utopia, in fact, is, utopias have been, I would say, proposals, they have, they have brought up different proposals throughout the centuries, of course, then we can discuss, and we will discuss with the students, we will discuss about the extent to which, to which these proposals have worked or not, and have, in fact, been turned into dystopias and anti-utopias. But the point is that utopia as a genre, and utopianism as a frame of mind, and utopia as a method, as an intellectual method, has got to do with the realization, the acknowledgement of a crisis and about it. it's also got to do with the attempt, the endeavor to find ways out or around or through crisis. So thank you again and good luck to all of us. Hello, good morning everybody. I'm privileged to be here. I'm very glad to be part of this big project. My name is Andreas Mahler. I'm from a university that easily tends to be forgotten, Berlin. Um, <laughs> and uh, in Berlin, I am from that university, which is called Die Freie, the Free University of Berlin, which employs 
that there was once a university that was at least felt by some to be the occupied one, the one in crisis or under crisis, and that had to be sort of given an alternative that uh, should last at least as long as the occupied one was still under different pressures and different influences. My work is mainly on the early modern period, but I'm also sort of dealing with modernism and postmodernism. One of the questions that I'm asking and that are pertinent to what we're doing here, I think, is how does what we call the pre-modern epoch relate to what we are now beginning to call the postmodern epoch, even though we may not be the ones to decide whether we're postmodern already or not. So uh, the main thesis and the main question I'm asking is, aren't in a way, and that's a rhetorical question, I didn't intend that, but aren't in a way the questions we're dealing with today the problematic solutions of the early modern period? Isn't there a link between what the Shakespearean age has come up with solutions and what we now see as problems and what we now would like to renegotiate again, to go back into the questions and ask them anew, trying to find new answers? And I think this is partly also what this program will be about solving the early modern crisis by finding solutions that produce a postmodern or a pre-postmodern, a preposterously pre-postmodern <laughs> uh, crisis, which we're all facing. Agamben was quoted already, and Agamben, in a way, tries to make us believe that what we consider to be crisis has now become permanent. There is no alternative to it, and that we're sort of living in that crisis. You probably also know Bruno Latour's word that we've never been modern, and if you say the postmodern answer is the pre-modern, his polemical way of saying that we've never been modern says that modernity is probably not the right answer because it sort of introduces a concept that, as he says, or as he puts it, never has to question itself any longer. There is modernization forever. And as you can see in politics nowadays, people are always again and again coming up with modern solutions, progress, growth, economics, all that kind of thing, which seems to be the only answer. So what I particularly like in this program is the European aspect of it because it combines all the different cultures that have developed on the European continent over the last centuries and it combines them in a way that addresses the diversity, as Natalie has sort of pointed out, the diversity of the different cultures that does not try to monologize them into just one pattern which might be the one and only successful and truthful pattern. Especially in a time when people think that it is necessary to make nations great again, I think it is much better to sort of show what different cultures can contribute and how not one culture is better than another culture, but how cultures work together. And this is what I'm, why I'm particularly happy to be part of a group that started with four, then expanded to six, then to eight, and unluckily not to 10, because one of the partners sort of, sort of disappeared. Uh, but to nine now, and where we can sort of contribute and integrate things that our own strong points and as such sort of try to build the community which is Europe. I wish us all good luck. Thank you very much.
Perhaps, perhaps it is working now. Can you hear us now? Very good. Hello. Very nice to hear you, not only to see you. Hi there. Um, do I have a few words? Okay, we are, we are delighted to greet everybody, all the participants in this wonderful project uh, on behalf of the SEGET team. Uh, we are only uh, five now here, but until very recently we had uh, the Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Arts with us, Dr. Voido, and the Director of our doctoral program, Dr. Sony, but they had to take their leaves because they are teaching classes at 10 o'clock. Uh, we are delighted to participate in this project and we are very much looking forward to hosting you uh, later on in uh, SEGED for the intensive program in uh, uh, May and uh, early June. We have, uh, I mean, I have uh, participating uh, students uh, with me right now, and we are uh, very happy to listen to the presentations and to be connected in this uh, wonderful cooperation. So good luck for the project. Uh, thank you for all the efforts and energy that you have put into this and uh, we are looking forward to the continuation and uh, good luck. Thank you. as well as uh, Dr. Kawakawa. And uh, we just say that we just like to say that we are very pleased to, you know, to attend this this, um, this conference today, this event, and that we are looking forward, we are all looking forward to Zeged and to um, you know to the experience of the, the new faces. So just hi to everyone. <laughs> I want to tell you, those who are on the video conference, you can switch off the video conference now and follow us on the, on the streaming. It will, be, it will be okay because I think you will see better if you just put the, the streaming. Okay. Okay, so now I will, I will show you the um, website and the Moodle platform. Uh, Marie-Noël is, is here, she, she was in charge of uh, preparing the platform of the, of the Moodle, so she will assi assist me if I have a, a problem. <laughs> um, okay, I, we will start with the website and then we go to the Moodle. So maybe you have already seen this uh, website, you can see it here. Uh, just a little overview uh, with, the, with the sections of the, of the website, you can see here uh, the project, then you can see the partners, the, the events, the seminars, the participants, and then the contact. So we can enter just some section in the partners, for example, you can go and see the different universities who participate to the project. So here you have a, a menu of the universities. We can see, for example, Murcia, uh, you have a little in, uh, presentation of the university in English and in the home language here in Spanish. And each partner have given um, a definition of the crisis uh, in their home language. Um, then we can go to the seminars. This is very important for the students who will participate to the project. Uh, because you can see here the description of all the seminars that will be done in, in Seged. 
so you have here also the, the menu, a little presentation, and you can, you can see, I will show another example of seminars, sorry. <laughs> um, let's see, for example, the seminar fact because we have a, a video. Here, this is uh, Agnieszka Romanowska from Krakow. Uh, there is a little, a little video where she gives a little introduction of her seminar in a few minutes. And you can also uh, download the full seminar presentation here. It's a document, a PDF document. This is for the students, very important. <laughs> Uh, then you can also watch, uh, see the participant section. Here we can find all the teachers who participate to the, to the program with their picture and a little biography. And uh, for the participants, uh, all the students participating have given um, a video to present themselves. So we have the list of, of the students for each country and uh, a little video. I suggest that we see one, just maybe not uh, entirely, but a little bit. So we can open, for example, we can see Seged students. I, okay. Okay, this. I don't know if, ah, sorry, there is no sound. <laughs> okay. Ah, no. <laughs> okay, let's go there. Okay, we, we will not watch it entirely, but uh, when you are at home, you can, you can look at the videos. Uh, so we have, we have one for each, each group of students. Uh, okay, then just another thing about the website. It, uh, it's quite uh, simple and easy to see, but uh, you have here on the left corner, uh, there is the menu of the seminars that you can access at any moment when you are uh, on the web page. You can go back to the, to the seminars. And finally, here in the upper part, you have uh, access to the Facebook group. It's an open Facebook group where we will have some, some discussions or we, can, uh, we will post some information about uh, the project. Uh, there is the, um, the Twitter conversation which is actually open today. If you have Twitter, you can interact on, on the New Faces Erasmus uh, conversation. And finally, you have the access to Moodle. So we will have a look now to the Moodle platform. So I say thank you again to Marie Noel because she did a big work with this. Um, so when you arrive on the platform, you, you, can, see, uh, you can see this and with the, all the, the seminars that are available. But uh, you will have, each uh, teacher will have access to the seminar uh, he's teaching, and the students will have access to the seminars they are registered in. So uh, let's go, ah, I, maybe I, Okay, I can't. I I don't have the the password here. So I oh you you have a yeah. Okay. Je croyais que j'étais déjà logué en fait. Ah oui, à partir du casse. Oui, du casse. 
Mais le tour, si tu peux. Le oui, ah oui, c'est vrai, ouais, j'ai oublié à chaque fois. Euh, tu peux retourner en arrière, c'est bien. Ok, sorry. Ok, so. Ok, I see for the moment. Uh, ok, for the, for the moment, I can see only this, uh, this seminar because I am only registered in this part, which is actually um, Teachers Network. It's a space which is for the teachers. Uh, to have a discussion or if they want to share some information, they can use this space. And uh, if... Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay, it's okay. Okay, we can, okay, so we enter a seminar. So you can, if you are a student, you can imagine you, you are registered into the seminar one. So this is what you can see. You can see your teachers. Uh, then there is a space for um, announcement. This is for the teacher to put some information for their students. And then there is a discussion, which is a discussion space for the students and the teacher of this group. Uh, then you can see um, the, the information that is available also on the website with uh, the seminar presentation, the bibliography, the, the plan of the session. So you, this is uh, how you can, you can see the session. For the teachers, if uh, we, we see it as a teacher, je peux me mettre là? Ah, okay. For Okay, for the teachers, you, you can edit the space. So you can uh, click here, turn editing on, and you can, uh, you can modify and you can add some, some materials. You can add an activity or a resource. You can also add a new section at the end here. There is a little uh, plus. So um, this is the, huh? ah, okay. Okay, so here you can, you can add a section. Uh, for the teachers also, you can, you can put some in information in the announcements. This one is only, the, only the teacher can put information here, but all the students can read it. Uh, then there are... Not celui-ci. Celui-ci, ils peuvent pas... No, ils peuvent le lire. Oui. Oui, they can read it. Um, and then there are those two common spaces. So I will go back uh, to the... Okay. Thank you, Marie-Noël. <laughs> uh, okay, there are two common spaces. This one is the teacher space, the teacher's network, as I was saying at the beginning. And then there is the new faces general, which is for all the teachers and all the students of the project. Uh, here we will... Uh, post general information, like for example, practical information uh, about uh, SEGED uh, program or any practical information that, that can interest everybody. So we can get into it. For the moment, there is not much information, but we have started to put some tutorials to use the platform. Like for example, how to add a picture in your profile. And there is a little tutorial. Um, I think, ah yes, just a little, a little thing, you can also uh, do the configuration of your space if you want to have this uh, window on the right uh, smaller, you can put them like this and they will appear on the left, like in a smaller format. And that's it, it's easy. <laughs>
Okay, thanks to you. And I think we can uh, start with the first, uh, with the first panel, uh, what is crisis? So we will leave the floor. <laughs> Did you see you in the evening? <laughs> 